Scott, you are hearing stuff on social media. You're seeing it in the news about um, vaccine requirements. I, I sure am, Jeff. It's it's all over, and it's even having discussions already with my clients. So yeah, we're we're talking a lot about it in all these venues for sure. Yeah, um, of course I'm I'm to blame for some of this because I put it on my social feed as well. But uh, should employers or buildings require vaccinations? What well, do you I, think from an HR yeah, standpoint? That, that that's that's a great question. Um, and and basically. Jeff, there's there's a lot to be thinking about. Um, and this is not gonna be an easy answer. And by the way, thank you for throwing me to the wolves so early on. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, of course. But it, it's like everything in 2020, there, there's, we're in uncharted territory. Um, we really truly are. Um, at this point, and this is where we stand on December 8th at, at 8 a.m. Um, that could change this afternoon, it, it, and it's probably going to evolve as, as we move forward. L let me kind of give you a little bit of the background as to what I'm thinking about, and then we can, we, we can move forward with any other questions. So currently, neither the EEOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, nor Federal OSHA have published any specific guidance on this issue to date for employers. So we're kind of out there hanging um, by, by our threads, so to speak. So my position right now, where what I'm taking and communicating with questions and on social media and people that are coming to me, my client base, and, and less subject to contrary state or local law, as an employer, I think it's very clear that we can implement a mandatory flu vaccination policy as long as there are some uh, related exemptions. And that's where the EEOC comes into play and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Um, there's, there's precedent for this because there are 18 states that currently require uh, flu vaccinations. So there's precedent before COVID is just a, a, a new, a new <clears throat> uh, I guess, uh, a, a new piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So what, what the um, currently what the status is that as we look at this, um, we can implement the policy and under the provisions of ADA, an employee may uh, ask for an exemption based on a covered disability. And so we would have to address that issue. An employee may, under the Civil Rights Act of 1964, request a religious accommodation based on their, their religious belief. So we have to juggle those and make sure that we are in, in compliance um, based on that. The, this is a serious issue. I think that as an employer, we're gonna find ourselves or employers are gonna find themselves right in the middle. Um, I saw, I read an article yesterday where 51% of Americans have said they would get the, vaccine, the vaccination, 49% naturally are saying they wouldn't. So I think we're gonna see those same numbers in the workplace. So the employer is gonna be in the middle. And so I think what we've gotta do is be very, very cognizant of, of what this is gonna um, create in our workplaces. My suggestion is that we, as an employer, we begin now today to communicate and discuss both the pros and cons of getting the vaccination. I would be very careful about using the term mandate right now. Let's just talk about it. Let's communicate. Let's hopefully we can provide good, timely, accurate information to all of our employees, get them involved, talk about the apparent um, lack of significant risks that uh, at least we're being told, and, and, then, and then talk about the vaccination. So that's kind of where I'm coming from at this point.